Stellantis lays off 400 employees on a mandatory remote work day, which shockingly is not the most surprising thing that Stellantis has done. From jacking up prices since 2021, the thin and dealer martyrs on challengers and chargers, to not wanting to buy back defective vehicles. Stellantis has taken everything graded by FCA and flushed it down the drain within three years. But what if I told you that Stellantis has been on a mission since 2021 to fire all the America-based FCA employees and with the latest layoff, 93% of all US-based FC employees are now gone. So my 32,512 friends and the same 9% of you guys not yet subscribed, what's worse than feeling helpless against your fight and against corporations and dealerships who seems to renegle your MSRP paperwork for your Demon 170, or in situations where companies burn your vehicle to the ground and then don't want to cover it on their insurance, or let's say a situation where you know you're dealing with racism within an automotive group and $10 million isn't a big enough fine against them. Well, my buddies at Gordon and Partners, they are here to help you because for far too long, these companies have gotten away with scamming you and now it's time to get the help that you need and the help that you deserve so contact my friends at gordon and partners at my special email address at butter at fortinjured.com get access to one of the best law firms in the country that has even helped me in situations that i've had with some of these dealers around the country now i'd like to extend my gratitude from me and my 32,000 friends and to say nine percent yeah subscribe to all the former FCA employees who were either fired or offer buyouts or retire early to get away from Slanis' new overlord CEO, Paulo Severus, because I've had sources from the very top to the lowest levels within the UAW, FCA, Stellantis, some of the vendors, and I've heard a lot of people who quite frankly do not like their new CEO, but thank you to all the former FCA employees past and now presently still left in Salandis. Thank you because you literally made vehicles that us Americans, we enjoyed, we loved. We were inspired to work hard to acquire. And quite frankly, majority of the vehicles that FCA made, it reshaped car culture. There's never been a set of cars or set of vehicles within one brand that literally, no matter where you looked at, they were, they were in TV shows, they were in movies, commercials, literally everywhere you can go, you will see some kind of Challenger, Charger, TRX, whatever. They were everywhere. And I don't see that from Mustangs, I don't see that from Corvettes, don't see that from Camaros, it was Dodge products, or it was Jeep products, or it was Ram products, but, uh, not anymore, sadly to say. Mike Manley, the former CEO of uh, FCA, who tragically had to take over after Sergio passed away, he literally signed every employee's pink slip once he shook the hand of Carlos Severus on the stage. Um, let me go to this article. But there we go, Mike Manley and Carlos Severus. Basically, in his hand right there is every FCA employee's pink slip right there there he literally signed all your firings right there in that one single gesture while both of them smile and mike manley he basically took off before the crap hit the fan to go jump and you know be the ceo of auto nation it's quite funny how some of these executives they seem to find a way to know how to get out at the right time mike manley he finds a way to get out at the top from being at fca to now being at auto nation and then Mark Stewart, after he pisses off the UAW, running around in Mexico, pissing the UAW off. And next thing you know, he finds himself as the CEO of Goodyear. But these guys, they always find a way to come out on top where everybody else takes the L. But this whole concept of the PSA and the FCA merger being a merger equals, that's not really how it played out. It is not a merger equals or designed to protect workers from layoffs. It was basically PS, uh, PSA entering the US market 
getting shareholders rich and making vehicles that the government mandated because they thought that the government was going to basically subsidize their vehicles and it's not going too well for them right now but you know within weeks of Solantis being created i mean we heard of srt getting disbanded oh the days of the hellcat v8 are numbered dodge is going electric we all heard that one what july 2021 we heard a whole bunch of nonsense and then the first round of layoffs was disguised as buyouts later on that year Solanus in november 2021 let me go to the article november 2021 Solanus citing electrification plans offers buyouts for some workers Solanus specifically targeted the oldest in age and the oldest in seniority for the first round uh, looking for those who were 55 years of age uh, or older with 30 years of experience or those who were 58 years of older with 10 years at the company but i mean how can this be i mean you know didn't carlos severa said that Solanus's global footprint let me go to this article right here didn't he say that his footprint was a a shield for jobs to shield it from layoffs i mean that's literally what he said within days of the merger initially published january 19th 2021 the merger was january 16th so three days later he said that the merger that the merger between the two companies was a shield for the auto jobs so land ceo called severus on tuesday did not rule out job cuts at the newly created transatlantic automaker but said that the results would be better than if its predecessors failed to merge the merger of psa and fca is a fantastic shield against social problems in the two companies Tavera said during his first news conference for the combined corporation held virtually job cuts would have happened had this merger not been a success and i'm going to show you later on this video that this merger was such a success that you know of its 400,000 employees it seems quite funny that 97 percent of employees from fca are now gone within four years of this happening it's insane but 2021 was not the only year this happened right i mean if we go down to this next article right here now that's on 2021 here we go the next year we have voluntary buybacks in 2022 with uh what 13,000 salary employees aged 55 or older with at least 10 years on the job it is very interesting to pull out the most experienced and also highest paid workers first man no wonder this company has been going crazy over the last few years with a lot of nonsense going on all the senior people who were basically holding the glue together they're now gone but if you read his next quote the offer was part of our transformation to become a sustainable tech mobility company and market leader in low emissions vehicles funny how it doesn't say they want to be a leader in vehicle manufacturing but rather a tech company if you have watched my videos before i've always shown the indian lady saying that Solanus's future is software-based services if the past was about increasing margins by moving customers north in hardware and trim levels our future is about offering customers software-based services which you'll see soon enough with these software lot vehicles with less innovation less design which that fits the bill for the charter daytona i hate to say it if you see video games nowadays where they basically have dlcs all over the place where they ship incomplete games and the next thing you know there's patches and patches and patches and patches and patches i hate to see that happen to Solana's vehicles just saying with in terms of employees most software companies do not have like four hundred thousand employees right uh let me open this sheet up let's see let's google microsoft microsoft employee count microsoft employee count in the united states they have 120,000 with 221,000 worldwide so that's way smaller than Solanus's 400,000 employees on salary um let's do google let's see google has 156,000 employees in 2021 which like i said that's a lot less than 400,000 from Solanus. so it's no wonder why they're trying to get rid of literally 90 percent of their employees because 
tech companies don't need a lot of employees when they just form the workout to foreign workers. In November of 2023, let me go back to my article, which in November 2023, Solanus offered buyouts to half of his salary employees. Solanus said Monday it is offering 6,400 salary employees voluntary buyouts at its work to cut costs amid the transition to electric vehicles and agreeing to a new UAW contract. The buyouts will be about half of the company's salaried U.S. employees not represented by a union, which is currently 12,700. Another 2,500 U.S. salaried employees are unionized and are not being offered a current buyout. Currently, there are 12,700 employees that work in the U.S. on the Salinas. But let me ask you a question. Where is the 189,000 employees that on average used to work for FCA before Stellantis because if I go, let me go back down. If I go down in Google, FCA employees, employee count 2020, so basically the year before the merger, there was 189,000 people on average that worked for FCA. Now, if you go and look at uh, Statista, about 50% of the 189,000 workers worked within the US. So basically 90,000 people worked with FCA in the US and now with Stellantis is saying that half of the workers was 6,400 people. That is a lot of people gone from 90,000 to basically 6,400 people within what 2021, 22, 23. That's literally three years from 90,000 to 64 to, to what? 12, no, they're really what 12,000, right? 12,700. And then they're going to buy out half of those people to take it down to what 6300 people and then you have just what the other day yeah march 26 uh Stellantis mandated a remote work day to lay off 400 employees so you had what 12,003 i mean well yeah like 12,700 they offer buyouts to 6400 people so that should be what 6000 what 300 people and then you subtract another 400 people. So now you're really around like what? 5,900 employees left within Salinas from like 90,000 FC employees. So if I mean, let me pull my calculator out. I'm gonna do this in real time. So you basically have what? 5,900 employees. We're gonna divide it by 90,000. That gives us uh, 0 0.06 times 100. That's you 6.5% minus 100. That is 93.4% of employees eliminated within three years, right? That, that just wild. So there was 84,100 employees fired within three years, divided by three years. That means on average, 28,000 employees got fired from FCA within three years. Either got fired, got buyouts, retired, or just left the company because they just dipped out. Because I know some guys who work for the company and they just dipped, they just got out of there because they knew the crap was about to hit the fan. So that is a lot of bodies gone. And if you think my numbers are off, that there is no way they fired that many people at literally one time. I mean, if you go look at this article right here, what do we have here? Let me zoom in so everybody can see it. And don't think I'm capping here, as the young guys like to say. Solana is offering voluntary buyouts to 33,500 employees. And then we have this turd of a quote. Solana said it is taking the necessary structural actions to protect our operations and the company and cited preparations <laughs> for the transition to electric vehicles, which I don't think is really going over too hot right now, right? You have no one buying the Wrangler 4xE hybrid. Um, Jeep removed a shift from the Toledo plant. No one is behind the, what the Grand Cherokee 4 e hybrid. Jeep removed a shift from the Mac plant. No one is buying the 300. Um, no one's buying the Hornet, the Charger, the 2500 Ram. You know, but don't worry, you know, everybody. Don't worry. Our our European overlord thinks that electric chargers are going to jumpstart the company again, and we're going to be a okay. <laughs> Solana's chief operating officer, Mark Stewart, told employees in April in a review of his operations had made it clear that we must become more efficient. I guess more efficient to, to Solana's means 
we're going to fire 97 percent of people and have you do 97 percent more work for your pay and i don't know how more efficient you need to be with 97 percent of your fellow employees gone and uaw workers don't worry Salance has not forgot about you either i mean it's saying right here that more layoffs are coming in the future under the uaw contract hmm, that mr sean fake i mean fain signed the company agreed to offer fifty thousand dollar buyouts for veteran production and skilled trade members it will offer buyouts in 2024 this year more guys will get bought out from the uaw in 2026 so sean fain signed pink slips for other people as well and i thought he was so pro-union but i mean mike manley he signed the fca employee pink slips when he shook Tavares' hand and dipped out, is Sean Fang do the same thing? He signed UAW members' pink slips, and he was over there all buddy-buddy with Biden, pretending to be so hard and not desperately seeking his approval. Is Sean Fang going to jump into politics? You never know. If you look at Selena's game plan, they're basically simplifying the platforms, right? They're, they're making multiple vehicles off the same chassis so there's no r d costs everything's already been developed so they don't need propulsion and all these other engineers if one chassis is going to fit several different vehicles right you don't need people anymore and whenever you need a change you just go hire contracts from overseas stellantis fires pretty much the entire u.s staff that's no pensions that's less payroll that's you know, let's less, less medical pay. Heck, now you can sell your North American headquarters because only person in there really is Tim Ganisius. 97% gone, people not, not working there in the building anymore. So you can see why they want to sell the headquarters. I mean, that reduces their property tax. But to bring more money in, they jack up prices by what, 50% and are going to try to flood the market with EVs because they thought the government was going to subsidize these electric vehicles like they used to subsidize like E85 and all that other nonsense. But, you know, they learned a valuable lesson. The French learned a valuable lesson about politics in America that, you know, you don't trust politicians in election years because now even Biden is talking about he wants to, you know, slow the early stages to the shift of electric vehicles because majority of Americans don't want electric vehicles and so he gonna do whatever he can to kiss people's butt cheeks in order to get reelected. which i hope you guys don't forget the nonsense that he's been doing over the years but Salance is laying off people more than likely just to replace them with cheap overseas labor i mean i've seen in the it field for decades you have like entire groups get replaced by foreign workers or you get foreign workers like indians come you know into the country on like the what the h1b's and then if you guys remember in what i think 2016 this little gym with disney let me pull it up let me pull this gym up with disney but yeah here we go disney forced 250 of us american it workers to train up the indian workers who replaced them so i said i remember this finding danny because this is one of the last times i worked in corporate it because i've seen the writing on the wall you, you can ask really any it guy and they'll literally all tell you that entire it departments are filled with full of foreigners with a few americans sprinkled here and there to be the managers so they have people like me sitting in the meetings and have me convey back and forth with them i mean it just is what it is but let me know what you guys think was this truly a merger of equals or literally a slaughter of fca american employees there's like less than 6,000 U.S. employees left within the company. I don't think it was a merger of equals. I think it was just a merger of decimating one company with the illusion of it being equals. But like I said, let me know what you guys think. And uh, until the next time, I'm out. <laughs>